is today, bubs. Well, they were like, good morning, everybody. It's Friday, and we're coming to you live. Right here from inside the main build facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, I'm Tom. Entering stage right is the master himself, Bubba. It's Friday. Good morning, Bubba. How are we doing today? I told you to stand right here at this frame rail. Get closer. There we go. Stay. It is hot. Morning, Bubba. How are we doing today? So far, so good, man. Let me tell you. Uh, BEM this past like, I don't know, four or five weeks has been absolutely on fire. I'm talking everything from pro mod builds that we have been doing to pro touring stuff, to resto mods, to modern yeah, performance, man. to yeah. exotics. This place literally has been insane on fire. I'm literally, I'm talking like How we are delivering body shop? literally one to three cars a day delivering and bringing in. So it's been absolutely insane here. Place has been jam packed, a lot of hard work, but I'll tell you what, the quality has probably never been better. Uh, and serious, serious, great five-star reviews Bob. coming in. Yeah, interesting you say that because the, sh the quality of your work is so top shelf, man. Everything you do is just the best of the best. So now you're saying the bar is going even higher, man. Well, of course, man. It's, uh, you know, as, as you know, everything in today's world, the technology moves forward and you've got to move forward with that daily, um, sometimes even hourly. You know, we're sponsored by some of the biggest names in the yeah, industry. Are, and with that, each one of those companies puts out something new, sometimes daily, sometimes, you know, Extreme Dimensions. Yes. They put out 40 new products a month yeah. at a minimum. Yeah. And that's a lot when it comes to body panels and mods. It so is. for aesthetics and changing the looks of these cars, it is something that you want to stay up with. So that is why it's great that we are hooked in with these guys because they blast us with emails all the time of hottest new releases. Then we immediately get them up on the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports site so that you guys have access to them. Even if you aren't local and you don't want to send your build in, you want to just do it yourself just at your right house there. or just straight off the site. Hey, Bub, I was funny. I was at Walmart today. A lot of people don't know that for 16 years, I still go every Friday morning to pick up the shop supplies. Uh, I was talking to one of the local law enforcement officers here at the Jupiter Police Department, and she was saying, uh, that about how technically advanced you are as she stands back and watches you work uh, when they stop by. It's crazy the skill set that you've got all the time, man, and something's well, you know, always it's, brewing with you. Yeah, you know, it's uh, there's no there's no shortcuts, period. That's, that's number one. There's no shortcuts there's in doing mods to cars. Um, if you do a shortcut, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get something that's not 100%. Yeah. You're going to get something that is never exactly what you want it to be. You take your time, you go slow. Even if you are literally, there are projects, we do 10, 15, 20 projects at a time. Literally, yeah. if I'm just moving from one to the next to the next to the next, I literally position myself in points where- You do. You, you know, I can go start to finish on this one, yep, and then if I'm waiting for one. something, I'll, yep. you know, waiting for parts to come in, or maybe I hit a road bump or a delay, I will literally sit and wait until that product comes in. I'm not gonna rush it and try to get over, modify sure. something. You wait till it comes in, and then you move on to the next thing, so you're never just sitting flatline. Plus, we have like a two-year backlog, so there's no chance we but can wait, sit flatline. But wait, that's what I try to do, ladies and gentlemen, and when I'm moving from point to point to point, Bob always says, uh, you're wrecking things and you're not getting anything accomplished. So listen, so we had, and we'll do some Instagram postings for you guys later on, but we had quite a few rides come out this week alone. One of them, a brand new Corvette. Let me tell you, dude, massive turnaround on this car. So 2016 Corvette, we'll keep it undisclosed so we don't have any issues with it. Uh, car had a clean history on it, clean title, clean don't everything. trust people. Trust me, man. When you, guys, when you go and you make a purchase on a new car, make sure you take it to a professional and have it looked over thoroughly. This car was purchased 12,000 miles on a brand new Corvette, not mm -hmm. even a year and a half old. And this car had already been totaled on every possible corner and nobody reported the total. So. Everybody did the work to this car. We'll leave those names anonymous. It was repaired. It was repaired very shoddy at best. There were different, you know, control arms that were loose, control broken. arms that were falling off, mounts that were broken because the motor had been out of the car, the transmission had been Leaks. out of the car, the rear end had been out of the car, the quarter panels had been off the car. Keep in mind, this is a year and a half old. This thing had been gone through at every possible level and being sold to a now second owner, this guy had no idea that this first owner kind of cashed under the table and this is what he was left with. So we went through, we did all those mods, we got everything from General Motors yes, directly. Yes, everything came from And here. I will tell you what, that car is literally back Amazing. on his feet at a 100% operation, just like you went to Chevrolet and you bought a 2016 Corvette. So it's, it's great, man, to see that kind of transformation before and after. We'll post some uh, before and after pictures on yes, Instagram, yeah, just like we did with this Camaro this morning. We've kind of done some updates on this little guy. 
Uh, so stay tuned for all that stuff social media wise. Big things going on with our friends up in Newburgh, New York, above Orange County Choppers, man. They're off right now filming the new season, man. Good night. You guys got to see what's coming out of them. You and I have been on the phone with them a lot lately talking yeah. about the upcoming season. And, Bob, they just don't come any better than that, man. I'm yeah. sorry. Man. Good morning to Jeff Graham. Jeff Graham's out there oh, watching, Jeff, as morning. always. Hey, Jeff, your car's done. Come pick it up. We, the <laughs> hey, body color is Suspension looks great. Yeah, suspension's <laughs> fantastic, though. The rest of it, well, we don't know about the rest of it. So, and by the way, Jeff Graham is a 67 Camaro. You're finishing up. Yep. That just came out of paint and body. Wet sanding and buffing going on. Yep. That paint is sick. So, yeah, man. So, you know, that car started off in that paint color, you know. and uh, But you I, changed that at it first. Yeah, and it, it, it's like you want to stay close to stock. We've done this a lot on some of our, like, resto mods that you can consider them, where you stay very close to period correct, but you add a lot of today's finishing touches to it, right? So whether it's heavy metallic flakes, whether it's heavy pearls, um, modern suspension, which we'll talk about here in a second on this one, um, upgrading the brake kits, upgrading all that stuff, the steering, the rack and pinion instead of the old gearbox design. So there's so many different options and upgrades you can do to these things that make them that much more enjoyable. And that's what Jeff got on his Camaro. We'll be doing a filming of that probably in the next week, which we is so. great. We'll finally do that unveil. Long time coming, huge, huge massive half. project, man. Yup. Um, so it's, uh, it's something where, you know, that car, for example, paint and body wise, kept it very close to the color that it was, but we added a ton of metallic flake to it. And let me tell you, that thing sparkles like I can't, I don't even know. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, I'm not talking low rider West Coast with, you know, huge heavy grain sparkle, not that gangster, but no, has it's a not lot that, of flake like where as you walk it, on right. it, man, it looks like right. plastic yeah. sitting on top of the yep. car. Um, and it's just crazy, Bub, the way you've got that done. I mean, it's just, it's out of control. I'm trying to catch up, Bub, so I can talk to everybody here as we go I'm, on. I'm, I got it right here. Oh, okay. Why are you doing the same All thing right. that I'm doing? I don't know, Bub. That's just pointless. I just want to copy you. I can tell, obviously. How about that? So now the whole time you're going to be like this. So, Jeff, your car's ready to pick up. Two o'clock today, you can drive this beauty home. I hope you're happy with the final product. Hey, I'll tell you what. This client blown away. Well, hold on a second, Bob. Is Jess a pro touring? Today we're going to be talking about pro touring or pro touring so versus. So it's pro touring versus resto mod, right? And that could go very far, or that could be something as simple as a wheel design change. And that is why, as you see offset, you have two different design wheels. One of them being the GM Rally wheel. Both of these wheels are designed and built by Wheel Pros, American Racing model. Both of them are a two-piece forged wheel, so they are custom cut and custom order only. Typically, a two to three month order just on an average basis, just for a set of four wheels, right? And that's where people don't understand the timeline that you get with these things. It's not off the shelf, it's not in a box, you're custom and ordering it for that application. Yeah, and that's not doing custom colors, doing custom fitments, that's just like your generic order time, two to three months on four rims, right? That's how deep these things can go. So, Pro Touring Restomod. A lot of people ask what the differences are, and of course it all comes down to one thing, and that's budget. Some people are rolling with 50, some people are rolling with 250, right? And you're gonna get everything in between there as well when it comes to doing these rides. This client is going very deep in this project, Oof. but also on a budget. So this is going to be more of a, this is kind of an in-between, resto mod slash pro touring, right? So we're gonna push that line, but also keep it very factory style. And that cross the right? line, yeah. So in, in this case, you have, like I mentioned, two wheel designs over there, as simple as aesthetics, just the outside. That's the very first thing people see on your car. This one, if we were to go with that GM Rally reel, the average person would walk up and see this car when it's done in its completed fashion, front end and paint job and everything like that. They would walk up and be like, oh, that's a really nice resto mod just because of the simple fact of the wheel. They're gonna look at it. Your go-to is gonna be a GM vintage style wheel. It looks like an SS style wheel. What, what are you doing? Here we go. Here we go. Now you'll have to watch, Bob. I'll try to give everybody, Here we God, go. those wheels look good in that light, man. Yep, here we go. So I'll try to give everybody a look at how these wheels look so that they're close up, close up Bob. Tell me if that works, right? There. I mean, it was perfect how it was. But it's they can like see a little screen. bit closer now. Yeah, so I'm not really sure here. Anyways, then you also have offset a twisted five spoke, which is kind of like your torque thrust original series rim. That is something that has been in the car world for God, 60, 70 years. And that rim has just continued to evolve from a five spoke straight design with a matte gray center to a two-piece, to a three-piece forged design, custom cut, custom built, now up to twisted spokes. You can get them six, you can get them up to 10, 12 spokes if you wanted to. That would be more of that pro touring style build. You walk up, you see it, the very first thing on the car is going to be a massive rim, a huge dish, massive brakes behind it. You know somebody has put a lot of money into it when you can look at the single wheel and know that there's like $10,000 sitting in just one spot. That's when you know that that number is heavy in that car. So kind of your go-to pointers when you're looking at pro touring versus resto mod and what's in outside and underneath these rides. 
So, Valk, would you say that it's uh, the, the, the difference between a resto mod and a pro touring strictly comes down to the wheel and tire combination? Not necessarily strictly comes down to it. Of course, it's going to change on everything, your drivetrain, your power plant, everything involved in that car, your interior design. Is it subtle? Is it insane? Um, is it a center console that molds from the dash all the way back and wraps through, you know, two beautiful bucket seats going through the center of a bench seat? Um, you know, it all comes down to that full design. But for your average go-to guy, you look at your wheels, and if your car is themed properly, you can look at a set of rims and understand the way the car was built. And that's why I'm saying when you look at a factory GM rally wheel, you're going to walk up and know that that car was probably resto modded. It's got a lot of old, a lot of new kind of taken and mixed together, maybe 50-50, maybe 60-40, 70-30, whatever that percentage may be. Or you look at something that's a crazy massive two, three, four, five thousand dollar rim on each corner. Mm -hmm. You're looking at that and you're like, okay, that's a monster of a setup. It's custom cut wheels and tires. They've got four or five grand worth of big brakes sitting yeah. behind there. So you can look at it, you see those numbers in your mind naturally if you know the industry, and you can see how far they probably went under the hood. If they went 10 grand in wheels and brakes, they probably went 20 to 30 in the motor alone. Oh, well. uh, Jeff Graham says, glad he chose the first one. He's doing the rally wheels on his, right? That's right. That's a good looking wheel. Which is man. more of what you consider from a go-to. You walk up, the car's gonna look very clean, but with the modern stance sitting tucked tight, the tire up in those fender wells just a hair, you have that GM rally wheel on it, the average go-to guy is going to think resto mod. So, Bub, once the barrels, because his car is a, it's a beautiful factory GM blue. It's almost a light blue, a metallic blue right. with pearl on top of that. Right. And he's all, and I think all together between the base coat sealer uh, or the primer sealer, the base coat and the clear coat, Bub, uh, you're somewhere around 12 coats of paint on that vehicle alone. Right. So, what will look really good is this in, is the inside barrel of this particular rally wheel here, Bob, which is about four inches in diameter, all polished up against that beautiful blue paint reflecting throughout the barrel of that uh, of that wheel. Yeah, so it's going to look super good, man. And these are those basic go-to upgrades. Now, this front end from firewall forward has been completed start to finish right here at BEM. This thing came in, as you can see, the car itself shell. is terrible. Um, it came in as just the front shell. The front suspension was all factory stamp steel A-arms upper and lower and also drum brakes all the way around on this car. This thing has been upgraded at every level in terms of its bushings, in terms of the subframe itself. The subframe was pulled out, media blasted, put into our paint and body facility, gone through and done in the correct GM satin black, the chassis coating. So that's all been done in a satin black. Then we did all gloss black tubular powder coated A-arms upper and lower, upgraded sway bars, classic performance products, disc brake conversion in the front, also in the rear. We have a full coilover adjustable package on the thing, so you can not only adjust the stance, the ride height up or down, but also adjust the way the suspension handles in terms of the shock preload and the absorption on it, just by simple dials at the bottom, in which CPP does a great job at sending you in their instructions, yeah. set, you know, rebound to, you know, eight clicks to maybe four clicks. It, they literally give you options as starting points so to go out, run the ride, see how it feels. Maybe it's a little too soft, maybe it's a little too stiff. You can make those adjustments literally reaching in and adjusting those dials just that fast. Bob, one of the things that I really like about this car, um, and if you'd like me to, I'll move the camera so that the, the audience can see it. I really love the rack and pinion setup. For some reason, that's always got, got it's the little things that you do and build. It's the angles, it's the architecture, it's, the, it's just the design, it's the way it's put together, man. Uh, and, and just the, the angle of the way this connects to the factory steering wheel, so you're, using, you're able to use that factory column in there. It just looks real good, man. Well, no, uh, you know, it turned out great, you know, from what this thing was. We will post some before after pictures. We've done a couple on Instagram, but we are going to do some super in-depth ones so you can see the detail in fine, not from a far away. But I'll tell you what, man, when you go from something that this was, this thing had massive holes in the firewall all the way across. Oh. We literally had... When the original motor blew up, it blew a hole through the floorboard from the piston Dead. going through. So yep. we literally had to sheet metal the entire front end of this floorboard and the firewall going down, as well as a full HVAC, which is your heater and vent uh, air conditioning unit. All of that stuff was on the dash and the firewall. We deleted all of that with one of Detroit Speed's weld-in plates. And then we seam sealed everything exactly the way it would have been done coming down the assembly line in 67. So again, that factory style, but that modern component and fitment to it. So it's that resto mod style. This thing is all coated exactly the way it should be. The new wiring harness coming forward on it. So everything is set, plumbed, and ready. Now we'll go ahead and do that color change on this ride, get it to the two-tone that you guys are going to see it when it's done. And is this going to be a two-tone? You're doing a, a, a charcoal metallic with yep. a uh, almost ghost uh, stripe on the front of this. Yep. Thing, right? Yeah, it's going to be a, uh, an SS-style striping that goes on it. 
not the RS style, the single that went across the front. That's actually what Jeff's came in here was with that RS yeah, style. Yeah, you took all that front. off though. Before. Yeah, you know, some rides it looks really good on. Depends on your color tone, depends on your stance, depends on the look you're going for in the end. Personally, I like a cleaner look, especially on the 67 yep. Camaros. You've got a little bit going on there. You know, it's not the hideaway style headlights. You can buy conversions for them. But when you can see all the headlights, it's, you kind of get a lot going on. You got stripes going this way and lights going. It's just a mess going on, right? So we are going to clean this thing up, get this over into the paint and body shop. Then once it comes back over, we'll drop the motor and tranny in, which is going to be a 383 stroker hooked up to a 700R4. So this thing is going to be a ball buster Animal. when it's done. Yeah. Animal. Good morning to Jack up there in Canada. He says, hey guys, looks like uh, quite the project. It's really come a long way, Jack, and I love the way that Bob has literally smoothed in the entire firewall and used a factory seam sealer with the, seam, uh, with the new fat, uh, or smooth firewall to make it look like it was stock. It came down the assembly line. I'm, I'm kind of loving the architecture and design. If you'd like to see it up close, Jack, I'll bring the camera over. You can see that. I'll be glad to do that for you. It's really quite cool the way Bob des designs and builds this stuff. It's really, really neat. The whole plumbing for the uh, for the power steering unit. It's just cool. But power steering, right? That's going to be power steering. Yeah. So this is a power rack and pinion unit. This is. Uh, it's going to be, you know, of course, essentially fed off of a power steering pulley on the front of the motor, which is operated by its normal pump. That's going to be part of the serpentine system. Again, we're going to go with upgrades like that, a serpentine style pulley system versus a V-belt style system. Handle much better through the RPM range, plus maintenance on mm -hmm. them is just easy. Yeah, you literally have a right. preset sprung tensioner, you put the belt on and you are done. You don't change it till it literally starts dry rotting or falling apart. It's just that simple. It's a really nice setup, man. And this will last these, this couple, uh, elderly couple, not elderly, they're in their 60s. It's, it's their retirement car. This is what they wanted, man. Yeah, you know, and that's uh, that's kind of why we're going all the way with it. We're pushing that bar, but we're not going to take it over the top. They don't want something in the 200, 250 range, but they do want a car that looks like it's been gone through start to finish and not cheaped by any means. Right, and trust yeah. me, they have not cheaped it by any means. We have gone all the way with the best products you can possibly buy for this ride. And once it comes out of the paint and body, that's when this thing's really going to start coming together. We'll get the nose on it, get the motor and trans in it all fully polished by the way so when you open this hood it is going to be a monster sitting inside of here yeah so bub what are we talking about let's talk a little bit about tomorrow uh we have moved the podcast because of the ratings book for the podcast tell everybody about how the ratings for this show and the podcast are doing please bub. so yeah they've uh they've been incredible so what we've done is uh we've pulled all of our daily live streams which you guys are watching here now we have pulled them down from monday through friday to now only doing them every friday so you guys will still stay up to date on what's going on in the shops projects if you have ideas technical questions, maybe you've got a car you want to see us work on, we might even have it here. Send us in those ideas and we literally will put them up. But these are going to be just every Friday. And then for our podcast, we are actually doing that the first Saturday of every month. Because, Bub, we have so many tour commitments right now on the books. Uh, God, it's just crazy. But we want to keep the entertainment side of it to everybody. So I will keep new podcasts up every, uh, every Saturday. Um, and we'll just be out there doing our thing, man. That's right. a good time. Well, it's hard because we enjoy the entertainment side of it so much. Uh, we had a guy when I was in Walmart today, one of the stockers, and he just walked up to me, and he's going like this, and he goes, I know you from somewhere just here uh, when you buy the shop. You tell me that every time you it's go It's everywhere to the store. you go, so we love that never popularity. never happened to me at all. Oh, no, it happened to you the other night in a restaurant. Not Remember, at all. Oh, you were out with uh, four other people, three other people, your fiancé and another couple. Um, and uh, I was receiving messages. That's just messages. because I'm an absolute stud. That's the only reason. But I it never recognized. happens to him, ladies and totally gentlemen. Totally different. Everywhere there. he goes. Had no relation to the Facebook Daily Show <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's everywhere he goes. So the popularity is out there, bub. We're going to be talking to the Tuttles at one o'clock today about what's coming up next season, bub. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, that's kind of what we're going to do is talk to them at one for about what's coming up next season. Yeah. So not really much to talk about yet. You guys are going to have to stay tuned. Do you have that. any clue what OCC is doing next season? Yes, I do. And also what OCC and BEM are getting ready to do. So uh -oh. you guys stay tuned Are you serious? For that. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And again, that's what makes trimming these shows down to once a week and also the first Saturday of every month for the podcast that much funner because you are going to have to wait to hear some insane news. Well, that's one of the things you said the other day. when Are we you had sweating? Is it hot? Is it hot? Uh, one of the things you said to me. Uh, when Look how many messages I got here. 47 messages standing right here. Did you really? Jesus. Well, when you said to me the other day that you wanted to revamp the shows because of everything that's going on, the one thing you said is, Dad, OCC only airs once a month or once a week. Um, so I want to I do the same thing. Um, we want to do kind of that same style thing. A lot of good stuff, but obviously you know more than I know. You've been talking to senior behind the scenes more than I have if I you've just, got that kind of insight. I just know things, so you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. Well, uh, are we going to do a show Monday and release it or wait till next Friday? No, it's we're not changing the schedule. Okay, so one other Jesus question I have for guy. you, Bub. 
Uh, I do want to take uh, Kurt Sutter released his new show this week, The Mayans, oh, which is a spinoff of the very successful Sons of Anarchy. Nope. Don't watch it. It's fake. I think, I think Sutter, I, it is, and there's a lot of people who want to be Hell's Angels. Look, we're, we're, uh, listen, we're Harley Davidson. I don't watch fake writers. TV. I don't. I don't watch you know. these fake scripted reality shows, the Kardashian stuff. I don't watch any of that. I have no time for it. Trust me, my plate is too full, and I just don't need the Here's extra added Shelby, drama. That's a true Shelby Cobra car. That's a real Shelby Cobra. Definitely 427. 427, 427 car. That's correct. That's a big girl going by. Yeah, it's a big girl going by. Why do you laugh at the way you drive, Spock? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people that get scared of Shelby's, you can always hear it because you hear the cars get loose and you hear them come out of it, then yeah, you hear them shifting. All the time. You made, and then you you made like the throttle yesterday. on, off, on, yeah. off, on, off, and it's like, okay, buddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yourself. I'm in the yeah. wrong lane, bro. Pretty right. much. I got to go. Good show, man. Kurt Sutter's done a great job. And uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. The Mayans MC show, a spinoff of Sons of Anarchy. They've got some of the previous uh, characters in it. You'll be surprised if you haven't seen it. Yep. Bub, that's going to do it for this episode of Doing It Bubba Style. We want to thank everybody for allowing us to walk into their hearts and into their lives this Friday. That's right. Until you guys next time, Bob. Stay tuned until next week. Stay tuned. I'm going to beg Bob to do a show on Monday to talk about our no new chance. OCC thing. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any of those things, go to our website at BubbasExoticMotorsports.com. Scroll down on that homepage on the left-hand side. You will literally see, I'm using my left hand, but really on the page. For you guys, it's on this side. Uh, you will see all of our links out there. Subscribe to them, follow them, and they will literally go hot in your pocket anytime we do a new release, whether it be a video, whether it be a product, or whether it be behind the scenes shots, which you'll probably want to stay tuned for here real soon. We going to the gym today, Bob? I'm going to the gym. That's it for this episode of Doing It Bubba Style, ladies and gentlemen. Until yep. next time, Bob. Just keep on doing it Bubba Style. Ladies and gentlemen, let's reach out and touch somebody's life in a very positive manner today. Doesn't matter how much is on your shoulders. Doesn't matter how hard it gets. Good morning to my wonderful brother, J.K. Bub. Come back around front. Say good morning to your Uncle Jake. Your Uncle Jake is up there in the uh, Carolinas, and they are waiting for the hurricane to hit. Good morning, Jake. You mean the world to me. Morning, Jake. There he is. So, uh, the there you go. So, Jake, big shout out to you, man. I'm waiting for you guys. I'm praying for you guys. I spoke to mom this morning to check it out. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. He's a typical Lloyd, ladies and gentlemen. Four generators, five generators, gasoline. He's ready to go up there for the storm. Ladies and gentlemen, let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a really positive manner today. Let's open the door for somebody who's got their hands full. If it's an elderly person or if it's just a mom who's got a little baby in a stroller, let's reach out and open that door for them. Let's put shoes on somebody's feet. Guys, I'm sure there's a pair of dirty old sneakers in your trunk that you could give to somebody standing on the corner with the sign that says vet will work for food. And if that's the case, take them right across the street to Sitco, 7-Eleven, it doesn't matter. A protein drink and a power bar is cheaper than your designer cup of coffee. We're off the air this Saturday. I will be putting up one of our most popular uh, shows from a previous podcast. Bub, congratulations on the hugely explosive ratings on our number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast. I'm very proud of that. You and I are a great team together. Until next Friday, stay tuned. We have a big conference call with the Tuttles at Orange County Choppers. There's going to be a marriage between OCC and BEM, and we're going to share it with you. I'll try to get Bub to come on and do a show Monday, and we'll see if he'll do that. I don't think he will, but you may have to wait till next Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner today. Jake, we love you. Take care. Your beautiful wife and children. Mom, all of them up there, we wish you well. If you need anything from us from the hurricane, please let us know. Till next Friday, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on doing it. Love a style.